Are you a complete beginner to Power Automate, but you want to know how you can build out automation workflows yourself? Well, then this video is for you. This video is a first part of a series of videos in which I'm going to train you step by step how to build out your own Power Automate workflows. In this video, I'm going to be answering the questions of what is Power Automate? Is Power Automate free? What is Power Automate Desktop? And also stick around to the end in which I'm going to give you my top tip around getting started with Power Automate. This video is going to be not very um, demo heavy. I'm mostly going to be talking over slides. So do stick with me because I'm, I'm trying to explain this from the very beginning. And then in future videos, I'm going to give more examples, more demos and build more videos around real world examples. So let's get started by talking about what is Power Automate? So Power Automate is a tool from Microsoft as part of the Microsoft 365 suite of tools, which is essentially designed to automate things. And now it's essentially, it's a set of magic strings that tie different applications, programs, and services together. With Power Automate, you can make your computer send emails, copy files, or do other tasks without you having to do them manually. They are essentially triggered by something and it is a direct competitor for another product on the market that's called If This Then That, which is, um, I actually quite like that name because if this happens, then do that. So say, for example, if I get an email, then send me a push notification to my phone or, or something like that. Um, it allows you to connect different apps together. It can talk to many other programs and services in Microsoft 365, like emails and things like that, but also it can talk to third-party applications like social medias, Facebook, Twitter, um, other types of third-party, even things you think might be competitors like Salesforce, for example. It might be a new item into a CRM that is the triggering point for your workflow. And it makes things happen automatically. So you can set it up so that when, say, for example, something specific happens, like getting an email, it can then trigger another uh, action, like saving that attachment into a folder, for example. You can also use ready-made templates. So you don't have to start from scratch. Something we're going to look at shortly is we can look at pre-built templates that other people have built that will get us potentially 80% of the way there. Or if not, it could at least give us an idea of how something like that could be built. Um, of course, you can build out things like approval processes. That might be, I think, pretty much the number one reason most people look at Power Automate to start with is for looking at approval-based processes. So you can create processes where someone has to say yes to something before something else happens, like approving a document, for example. Um, and, and fundamentally, you don't need to be a computer expert, a software developer or an engineer to make these things happen. You can be what Microsoft referred to as a citizen developer where you can get a little bit of training, maybe via myself with these videos, maybe via um, the learning pathways from Microsoft's website, and you can start building out these automated workflows yourself. It's also worth mentioning as well is that there is a Power Automate mobile app as well. So you can actually trigger workflows from little buttons on a mobile app. So you don't even need to go as far as, I'm not gonna to talk too much about Power Apps in this video. Um, in the future, I probably will do a bit of a comparison because people do get confused between Power Apps and Power Automate. But with Power, uh, Power Apps, you're building out a, a mobile application, which of course can interact with Power Automate, but you don't have to build that. You can use the Power Automate app to trigger uh, workflows as well. So let's say for example, you wanted a, a clock in, clocking out system. You could use the Power Automate app to do that. But fundamentally, Power Automate is designed to save time and effort by making automation and, and things happening automatically, like handling repetitive tasks or connecting different applications together. Um, it, it's gonna get your work done a lot more efficiently. So let's have a quick walkthrough of, of Power Automate then and where it is. So I'm starting off from office.com, which is the home page of Microsoft 365 that we can see up here. Now to access Power Automate, it's just like any other app inside of Microsoft 365. We can access it either via the app launcher across the top by clicking on this little um, burger menu style thing at the top. And we can see Power Automate here. Or we can use a search bar. So we can type in Power Automate into the search bar and there we go. 
Uh, by clicking that, we're going to then take us to the Power Automate Make Studio. So this is where we can then build out more Power Automate workflows. Um, now, directly on the home page, um, you can see that there's uh, some links here to um, the learning pathways. Now, th this is a great place to get started if you've not used Power Automate before. There's some step-by-step -step guides, training materials, quizzes, and things like that directly from Microsoft that you can jump into. Um, if you've got a Microsoft account, you don't have to pay for. Um, you can have a, a personal account if you wanted to, and you can link that uh, learning and that training to that account. And you build up kind of points, I think, over time. And then once you've kind of got to a point where you've done a lot of different um, modules, you can then start looking at some exams, uh, which most of the Power Automate ones fall underneath a Power Platform exam. Um, so it might be, say, for example, um, the Power Platform Consultant exam, um, for example. So once we're on here, you can see on the left-hand side, this is our navigational bar of Power Automate. In fact, I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit just to make that a bit easier to read. Um, so on the left-hand side then, the, these are the kind of the, the core areas of Power Automate. Now, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of details. As I say, this video is particularly for the beginners. I just wanted to have a, a quick explanation, especially of the, the, the top four are, are, are really what you need to know. Um, the first one is create. So this is going to take you to the page where you can create brand new workflows. Now, um, we can see here, it, we've got a couple of different types of Power Automate workflow. We've got automated cloud flows, which are triggered by a designated event. So because this is what they call a cloud flow, um, which is different to the desktop flows, what I'll talk about shortly, um, because it's a cloud flow, it's triggered by something which is happening um, by a, a application or, or service or something like that. It's, it's maybe you're receiving an email, maybe it's a new CRM uh, item has been created, something like that. Whereas an instant cloud flow is triggered manually as needed. So this is where, as I say, you might be using the Power Automate application on your phone. And if you're using the Power Automate application on your phone, um, it might be, as I say, a checking in, checking out thing. So say, for example, you've got staff that go out um, on site somewhere and you want them to check in when they're there. You can then log a geolocation of where they are into a spreadsheet or a SharePoint list, for example. Um, you can do that using that instant cloud flow. It just gives you a, a button that you can either use through this Power Automate um, uh, sort of screen on your desktop, or you can do it by the Power Automate button on your phone. The next one is scheduled cloud flow. Now, this one again is particularly useful because you can get it to run as a kind of timer. You can get it to do something after a period of time. So, let's say for example, you wanted to run something every day at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, and it's going to just do that every single day. So, let's say for example you run a construction company and you want it to run an email, uh, you want it to run a workflow every single day at six o'clock in the morning to determine what the weather's going to be. And then based on that, you're then gonna send a email or push notification to all of your workforce to say, today's weather forecast is gonna be hot. Um, so uh, whatever, make, make, make some sort of decision based on that. Or it's gonna be raining, make sure you're gonna bring your, your coat and blah, blah, whatever it is. Those are types of things you can run automatically um, on a periodic basis. Um, it could be something that's checking for something as well. So it could be that's looking at a set of data and it's checking something to make sure that, that, that something isn't incorrect or it's flagging something every so often. So those are the, the kind of scheduled jobs that we can do. Um, and then the next one is a desktop flow. So what is a Power Automate desktop flow? So Power Automate Desktop is a component of the broader Power Automate platform that is designed to automate tasks and workflows on a Windows computer. It allows you to create and run automated processes, often referred to as flows, on your local machine. So it's directly on your computer. These flows can mimic human interactions with software applications, websites, and files, making it possible to automate a wide range of tasks. So this is a great way. I've seen this used for things like interacting with old legacy software, which is outdated and doesn't have an, an API. It's not open up to the inter internet in any way. So it doesn't have a way that you can connect to it. So 
If it was a, a website or an application which had an API, I, I don't want to get too technical here, by the way, but most modern things have a way of connecting to it, which is called an API, whereas very old legacy software might not necessarily have that. So an example I've seen of this in the past before is a um, an application for like a... Um, I think it was like processing invoices or something like that, but it's really old. It sat on a server. There was no way of accessing that other than sort of manually going through that computer and doing it. So they used a Power Automate desktop flow um, that was triggered at a certain point when, I don't know, let's say an email came in or something like that with an invoice. It took that attachment and then it uses desktop flow, um, which is basically like, think of it, that it's, it's almost like a robot grabbing your mouse, getting that attachment, dragging it into this kind of classic um, application on your computer, dropping that attachment into the invoice processing software. Um, th that's essentially what it was it was doing. So some key features of Power Automate Desktop Flows are essentially that it's, it is robotic process automation, known as RPA. Now, Power Automate Desktop is a type of RPA tool. RPA stands for Robotic Process Automation and is used to automate repetitive rule-based tasks by simulating human interactions with a computer's um, interface. So essentially, as I say, it, it, it's taking that human element out of it. Um, you can do all the same kind of conditional logic that you can do with cloud flows that we were just talking about before. And, and I'm, I'm only going to be really going into the detail of cloud flows as part of um, this video. Um, but it can use the same kind of if this, then do that type of logic. But the cool thing about the desktop flows is that it's, it's driven by uh, recording and playback, which means that Power Automate Desktop can record your interactions with that legacy app that we're talking about and then replay those actions back to you as how it's going to automate it. Um, and this is useful for automating processes that involve a series of steps like filling out forms or navigating a website, for example. And of course, you can integrate Power Automate um, cloud flows with the desktop flows, as we talked about before, which extends the automation capabilities and connects with various cloud services, apps, and third parties that we were just talking about. So that is the desktop flows. And the final thing is process mining. So this allows you to evaluate and optimize your existing processes and tasks and looks for ways that you can then convert that into Power Automate workflows. So what we can also see beneath this is we can also start building out from a template. Now, these are all the different kind of templates that we can use. And in fact, there's a dedicated templates tab on the left-hand side as well, which allows you just to drill into those templates just a little bit more. We'll come back to that in a second. Further down as well, you can also see that we can start from a connector. Now, it's important to understand what is a connector. So, what is a Power Automate connector? So, in the context of Power Automate, a connector is essentially an interface or a bridge that allows Power Automate to connect and interact with other software applications, services, or data sources. Connectors serve as a communication link between Power Automate and the external systems that you want to integrate your workflows with. You tend to find there are connectors for most of the Microsoft 365 products, so Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, all of those will have their own connectors that you can interact with. You will also find there are connectors for third party, um, completely non-Microsoft related things like Twitter or Salesforce or Jira or SurveyMonkey or all these different types of third parties as well. So let's jump in and take a little look at those. So just going back to this start from a connector area at the bottom, you can see these are all the different connectors that we have access to. Now, th there are more, there are loads, literally. If you click on all connections, there's hundreds, if not maybe even thousands by now. Um, but let's say, for example, I mean, I I I'm a SharePoint dude. You know this. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you've come here from watching some of my SharePoint videos. So let's just start off with SharePoint as a connector. So for SharePoint, this is basically where all the kind of magic happens with storing documents and that sort of thing. So a lot of the kind of actions and triggers are going to be related to documents. So you can see here when a file is created, um, when a file is deleted, these are triggers. 
So in Power Ultimate, um, and like with anything in life, everything has a start and a middle and an end. And the starting point of Power Ultimate is a trigger. So that is when, say, a file is deleted, that's when it's going to suddenly wake up, and that's when it's going to do things. So it might be, that, say, for example, you're not expecting a file to be deleted in a particular folder. So if it is, I want to get an email notifying me that that file has been deleted. If I scroll down, you can also see templates which are using SharePoint. So you've got things like send a customized email when a new SharePoint list item is added. Um, maybe uh, add an item to SharePoint and send an email. There's, there's loads of different things. Request a manager approval for a selected item, for example. There's loads of things which will get you started off using that um, connector. Um, but as I say, there's loads of different connectors which are available in there. Um, and when we have a little look um, in, in a future video of building out workflows, we'll take a look at those connectors in a bit more detail. So let's just jump back to this other tab, the templates tab in here. Um, so this, again, is, is where we can see loads of different connectors. So we can actually search by connector as well. So say, for example, I wanted to integrate with Twitter. I could search for the name Twitter in here. What's well, known as X, of course. Uh, Elon Musk there changed the names. But it'll still work if you type in Twitter. It'll find it. Or let's say, for example, um, Salesforce. We can find loads of interactions that are based on the connector of Salesforce. So look here, copy Salesforce tasks into Outlook. Receive a weekly email summary of new Salesforce opportunities. There's loads of things we can automate directly in here. Um, so, so you can also filter these down so we can look for remote work related um, workflows. Let's just remove that for a sec. Um, or it could be approval or button related, for example. There's all sorts of different things that we can drill down on to find different workflows based on templates. And these are actually all created by real people. They're then submitted to Microsoft to double check that they're a good idea, and then they get submitted into here. So there's loads, and they're updating all of the time. Um, sometimes there's ones which seem a little bit silly, almost, um, in there, that you think, well, why would anyone ever want to use that? A very common one for a long time inside of this templates library, the most popular one, uh, the most popular template was called something like um, what's the weather in my current location or something like that and you just think well you could just look outside of a window and you could tell what the weather was doing but that isn't the point of it going back to that kind of uh, example I was talking about earlier on that if you were a company that was wanting to know the weather and it was going to change things for your, your organization your employees or customers let's say for example you're running an events company or something like that and you wanted to know the weather, you could use that that workflow, um, and it might, say, get you 80% of the way there, because you're finding out how to get the weather, how to bring that information back into an email and send it to somebody. You could All you then need to do is add a scheduler on top of that, and there you go, you've got that kind of workflow built for you automatically. So it sometimes, it might seem a bit strange, but it, it, it might be 80% of a solution, or even 60%, and you just need to tweak it up a little bit. Um, and it can also help you understand what the art of the possible is. Of course, it's worth mentioning there's this Learn tab, which this will bounce you into the Microsoft Learning Pathways area, so you can see all these different kind of training courses um, that you can take a little look at. I, I would suggest go and take a look at that if you're in watching this video. You're obviously new to kind of Power Automate, you're interested in it. Um, go and take a look at some of those courses in there. Um, and then the My Flows tab, this is essentially where you'll see um, flows that you've previously created. Now, I have created a video previously, which was build, building out a clocking in, clocking out system using Power Automate. So if you're interested in that as an example, go and watch that step-by-step -step, um, video of how I built this out using the, the, these workflows, but you can see this is where we can see any previously built Power Automate workflows. It's broken down by cloud flows, so these are things which are cloud flows, desktop flows, which are flows which are running on my um, computer, and shared with me. So this is anything that anyone shared with me previously as well. So you can collaborate and you can work on Power Automate workflows together. So if, say for example, Joe Bloggs, my colleague, had created a workflow um, he could share that with me and it would then appear under the shared with me tab. It's also worth mentioning that it will also disappear from your Cloudflows area and appear in here. So if you did create it and you shared it with someone else, it then goes into this shared with me space. 
again, I'm not going to go into a load of detail with these because this section, almost under this line, is the more kind of slightly more advanced area of Power Automate. Starting off with approval. So if you were to build out approval workflows, which are ascending Power Automate approvals to approve, reject your comments, things like that, you can track all of those approvals from the received area, the center area, and the history area. So this is a good place. Um, you can also find an area like this in Microsoft Teams as well, by the way, um, where you can see all the approvals which kind of come and go from the workflows. Solutions, essentially, when you start getting into the real kind of um, big boy world of Power Automate, you start building out what they call solution files. This is where you can build out solution packages and bundle together multiple things like Power Apps, Power Automate, um, and things that bundled into these solutions, which you can then move between different environments. I'm not going to bog you down by talking environments and things like that right now because this is right at the beginning. You only really need to start thinking about environments when you start getting really into the kind of um, the details of Power Platform. Again, more advanced things here: process mining for for, for looking at your um, processes and looking at how they can convert into Power Automate. AI models um, where you can take things and process them, interpret things, and make decisions based on stuff. So. Um, Things like invoice processing, maybe taking out data and then processing it, sending emails based on things, that sort of stuff. Uh, desktop flows, so again, where your desktop uh, workflows have been, that sort of stuff. So a lot of that is more advanced stuff. Again, I would just focus on these kind of top four to start off with um, as part of your beginner's journey. To answer a very common question about Power Automate, is it free? So it, there's, there's kind of a two-part answer to this in which the Power Automate, like many Microsoft services, offers both a free and a paid plan, each with its own set of features and limitations. So Power Automate Free is essentially a plan available for, for Power Automate. With the free plan, you can create and run basic workflows and automations. However, this plan comes with certain limitations, such as a restricted number of runs per month, limited access to premium connectors, and less support for complex scenarios. Now, the free version, as I say, it, it doesn't cover things like premium connectors. Now, you might assume things like premium connectors, you think, oh, premium connectors, they'll be third-party things that I'll never want to use. Actually, Microsoft are a little bit um, cheeky in this area because there's certain things you wouldn't expect to be a premium connector that are a premium connector. So just to remind us of a connector is, is, is like connecting to an app or a service um, which you might think premium ones, they'll, oh, they'll all just be all third party. That isn't the case. The cheeky thing about this is things like Microsoft Word is a premium connector. So if you want to interact with a Word document, not move them around, that that you don't you can you can do that um, without using a premium connector. But let's say for example you wanted to create a new document from a templated Word document, you would need a premium connector to do that. Um, in SharePoint, you can create new files, you can copy files, things like that. That's all part of the, the out-of-the-box stuff. But something that gets people really unstuck that I see so often is that they want to create a new document from a template. So inject, let's say, for example, they want to take some information that's been emailed to them and then inject that into a uh, Word document, a sales proposal document, something like that. That requires a premium connector, premium Word connector to achieve that. So there you go, just looking at this, by adding in a action, we can see convert Word document to PDF is premium. Populate a Microsoft Word template is premium. This catches a lot of people off guard, so be careful about that. For more advanced features and capabilities, including access to those premium connectors and greater capacity, you can subscribe to Power Automate Premium. This is a paid plan, and the cost depends on the specific features and capacities that you require. Power Automate Premium allows you to build out and run more complex workflows and access advanced capabilities. The availability and features of these plans may change over time, so it's a good idea to check the official Microsoft Power Automate website or contact Microsoft directly for the most up-to-date information on pricing and plans. Also keep in mind that if you're already using Microsoft 365, you may have access to certain Power Automate features as part of your existing subscription, so it's worth checking if you have any Power Automate entitlements included in your Microsoft 365 plan. 
most people that are using Microsoft 365, unless you've got just an email only, for example, um, type of license, most licenses will include the free version of Power Automate, the basic version. But I don't want to do a disservice to, to, to the, the free version. The free version will actually solve most scenarios. Of course, Microsoft will want you to pay for the premium licenses, but they also want you to get the most out of the licenses you're already paying for. So you, you'll go pretty far. Most solutions I see, and I'd almost say 90% of the solutions that I've ever seen or built, are perfectly fine using the free version of Power Automate. And it's only for the, the more abstract, more detailed, more complex stuff that you start needing the, the premium licenses. And then finally, I'm, I'm going to talk about my top tip. I wanted to ask a favor. If you have already subscribed to my channel, and if you haven't yet, please do. But if you're enjoying my videos, I would also like you to subscribe, to join the membership of my channel. Now you can do this following the link in the description or by going to my channel uh, and click on membership and then join. Now the membership is, is just 99 pence per month. Um, what it will include, so you've got your typical badges and things like that, and th these look a bit naff at the moment, but I am having some cooler ones built at the moment. Um, but what actually it will include for you is an area for priority Q&A. So I'm doing my best to respond to all of your questions on my videos at the moment, but it's going to become a time where I'm not going to be able to answer all of your questions. Whereas with the membership area, there's going to be a priority uh, Q&A area that all of your questions will be answered. Um, you can see that in the membership tab here, so this members only Q&A, you can uh, enter questions into there and I'll be able to answer them for you. We've already got started with this um, particular, uh, particular benefit um, earlier this week. Um, it will also include exclusive members only videos. So these are videos which are going to go into a lot more detail. They are snippets from real training courses, um, which are things like designing and building modern SharePoint intranets. There's also an area for the members to actually request new training courses and vote on ideas for new training courses. So there's a lot of votes at the moment for Power Automate for beginners type courses. And this is what my members are currently voting for. So that's what I'm going to be building out, more of this type of content. Um, a lot of the content um, will be for members only and there'll be some free content as well. So if you want to subscribe, you can get access to the free content. If you want to join as a member, you can get access to all of the content. I do really appreciate you supporting me um, as I create all these videos in my own time and there are costs involved in terms of maintaining licenses and things like that. So it really helps me and it helps my channel grow. So back to the top tip then. So the final kind of top tip I would say about Power Automate and when you're first getting started, it doesn't matter too much, but very quickly, you, when you start building up workflows for wider kind of use from your organization, you need to start thinking about having service accounts. Now, the, this is kind of like a, a, a Marmite opinion from people that work with Microsoft, because you're going to get Microsoft telling you, don't use service accounts and don't do this, don't do that, because essentially they want to make sure that you're, you're properly licensing everything. And that is right. You want to make sure that everything is properly licensed. However, service accounts are a great way of making sure that you retain access to key workflows. Say, for example, if someone wants to leave the organization or something like that, by having a workflow um, th that has a service account attached to it, it means then you, you've always got access to it through that particular account. It also means if you want to run workflows which are sending out emails, for example, and things like that, it makes it much easier for it to come from an account which is called, say, do not reply at whatever your company is called, rather than Dougie Wood at whatever the company is called. So there's a top tip. I would have a good think about using service accounts and how that applies to the workflows that you build. But again, it's not something that's going to be um, vital right then and there. Um, it's something that um, that you will learn to do over a period of time, but just have a think about it. The reason why I raise it in the beginners video is that it's something that people often run away, start creating workflows left, right, and center, and they just don't think about how they're going to be maintained in the future. Um, are you going to be supporting those workflows? Because workflows inevitably will break and have issues and things like that, or is it part of a wider team? So that's why thinking about having service accounts that have got access to that can be really useful. I just want to thank you for watching this video. As I say, please do subscribe, 
join the membership of my channel and watch out for future videos about Power Automate.